Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm more than happy to see you here. And uh, I was in the very first EZBI community days. It was idea we discussed with Raimonds a lot of times when, when, when we were visiting our partners in different countries that we also need our community days. And we did it. And uh, I was very sad that last four years we couldn't meet you there. And it's um, a special event because we meet together. My colleagues, I do not see every day because we work fully remotely, our partners, our customers, our friends, and uh, the more the merrier, right? So we are smoothly uh, become to our topic of today. And uh, me together with Zane, who is getting her headsets, are talking about EZBA integrations with Jira apps. So. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I will cover why it is important to have integrations. What do we have in EZBI? How you can benefit from that? To show a, a few, only a few use cases where you can see how those integrations work and uh, talk a bit more about integration, uh, is a special integration with Confluence. So, Let's start. What is behind integrations in EZBI? Those who have seen uh, at least one or two presentations given by, my, by me or by my colleagues know that we usually start with a definition. What is EZBI? So EZBI is a business in, uh, intelligence tool for data analysis, for reporting and charts, with built-in integration with Jira, Jira apps, Confluence. And learning from that, you may notice that this integration part is very um, critical, very important for EZBI, for reporting. So let's go through why integrations matter. Nowadays, in uh, projects and companies, people from different areas, with different backgrounds, with different tasks work together towards uh, one common goal. They are testers, developers, project managers, designers, etc. And of course, they have different specifics of their da daily job. And for that, they use their tools. And that's OK. And, and th those tools differ. And, uh, and they use those tools to, to track their work, their progress. They use built-in. Uh, reports to understand how hard they are in their specific areas. But when you want to see how the whole project is progressing, when you want to see overall situation in the company or, or, or project, you have to look on those data uh, in one place. And there comes a reporting tool in this case. Of course, we are talking about Easy, EZBI, uh, where you can get all those data together. Um, though this is uh, a slide with, uh, where you can see all those integrations we have with Jira, uh, with Atlassian ecosystem. So Atlassian ecosystem provides those several applications for different teams and hundreds of, of apps to help them to do their daily operations. And EZBI has integration with a part of them to get those data together and to see both progress of current project from different viewpoints and uh, analyze how the process together works, analyze the collaboration between teams. So um, when EZBI was designed, it was designed as gener generic standalone business intelligence tool. And of course, it allowed and still allows to import data from different data sources, map them together, and build relationships and look on, on data from different perspectives. But those, who have, um, but those who have done some data mapping, which is a complex part of EZBI, complex things possible, know that it takes some time to understand what is in this data, um, in data source, what data structure is there, how data are related to each other to imagine and think about possible reports you want to create. Because depend on that, depending on that, you would change this data mapping. And to try and try to get those data straight. And 
For me, working in EasyDF for more than years, it also takes time. So it's good that with integrations, we have taken this complex thing away from you. And uh, working together with our um, partners, our uh, vendor, app vendors, we discuss what are the business needs of their customers, how they, they, how they store data, how they are related to each other, so we can build this import process, this data transformation process, and to, pro to, to provide our end users with ready-made dimensions and measures and sample reports to start using this integration. And one more thing, it's normal that all applications change over time. Some features are appearing, new data fields are appearing, something is deprecated, and you have to keep an eye on those changes to continue um, working smoothly with integrations. If you do it by yourself, you have to be on, 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 on charge all the time, but if we are doing integration, we continue maintaining those integrations. So uh, you um, all know that there are three main steps when we talk about the EZBI process. Import data, uh, create reports, and publish them. And it's nothing different for uh, um, integrated data. First of all, you import data from apps, and it goes through Jira import options. Just select um, custom fields or app itself and run data import. And during that, you will, uh, you will get dimensions and measures. Um, when you create reports, again, all the features are there, the same report builder, the same options to build different charts, different reports, um, add standard calculations. You will get those dimensions from uh, this particular um, integration. They are in the same dimension area, group by the name, but it's just for better visibility. And also you will, you will get a bunch of measures created during this import process, again, together with other measures. You can use them together in reports or in other calculated measures. Just uh, when you use those measures and dimensions, always remember that each dimension and measure works in a specific way and how they relate with each other. So just check it and, uh, and build your own relationships using new calculated measures. And when it goes to publishing, there is no difference at all because it doesn't matter where you get data from. If you have created those reports in the same account, just publish them in the same dashboards. Okay, this was a theoretical part. Now we will go through um, some u a very few use cases because if we, want to t if we would want to talk about all integrations and all options, we would talk all the day. But we have only 20 minutes left, I guess. Um, so, first use cases, I will talk about integration with Jira applications, Jira software and Jira service management, two um, use cases. First of all, um, as I said, we uh, usually include in our integration sample reports so you can start using um, those data directly uh, right away as you have imported data. So Sprint Balance Report is also one of our Jira sample reports. Uh, notice uh, measures there. There are Sprint Story Points Committed, Sprint Story Points Completed, etc. In Jira, there are only Story Points field and field sprints and a history. During heated discussions with my colleagues, I remember with Dina and with Janis Baeja, like five years ago, we discussed what measures we should build uh, during the data import process. And finally, we came out with sprint scope change measures. You can use straight away from measures, uh, from measures dimensions and create most of uh, basic, uh, most of most popular uh, sprint uh, or sprint reports. So um, we all, you also can use those, the same report types with other uh, metrics. If you do not use story points, you can analyze sprint scope change by issues. So we have sprint issues committed, sprint issues removed or, or completed, again, in our measures. And I will s tell you a secret. If you have a custom field, sim single select custom field, you can create your own set of sprint scope measures based on this custom field. 
And even more, we have created in our demonstration account um, report, the same type of uh, balance report, where we have used original estimated uh, estimates together with log hours to create spring scope change if you measure your, your spring scope in time. It is also a way how we use JIRA standard information together with imported JIRA uh, application data. Uh, also for service uh, management, we had discussions how to import data from different SLAs, and we came out with a set of me measures. All those are uh, standard measures, time to resolution met, breached, because they are the most important metrics when you talk about SLAs. Of course, you can add some more metrics. In this case, this dotted line is a target uh, percentage of met, um, uh, percentage of met, uh, of, of SLA met, and uh, you can just create a measure which contains a number to, 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 the, to, to show it and to see the information. Uh, you can analyze this SLA information by JIRA core in data, like by priorities. There is no limitations on that. Or you can publish information from different SLAs on the same report, again using standard metrics, time to resolution, time to respond, and uh, use trend lines, which are standard calculations, um, to show trends of that. Okay, there are some processing to show arrows instead of uh, numbers. <coughs> okay, the one of most popular Jira uh, ecosystem apps is Tempo, uh, our Tempo apps, because we all want to take control over time. Elita will talk about time later, but not about Tempo, but how to, how to take control on your time, not on your, but on project time. But yeah, therefore Tempo is popular, I guess. Uh, we all want it all the time, existential questions. We can talk about it on both. Um, yeah, also when it comes to Tempo, we also try to create me metrics that allows, first of all, to create most popular Tempo um, reports, like estimates versus actual, but you can extend it by adding some calculations. Uh, in this case, you can add calculation, is added calculation about uh, estimates accuracy, how large, how, how well we estimate our work, and to see, uh, yeah, on time, how it goes with actual data. Uh, or we also have imported data from Temple Planner, and you can uh, analyze uh, project progress based on what you have logged and what you have planned and how it goes. And in this case, we first of all have added um, logged hours from, uh, from, from Tempo work logs and planned hours for planner for on, on, on weekly basis, but using standard calculations like trend lines, uh, like uh, cumulative sums, you can build a nice burn up chart. And again, all those measures are built in you just use them together, add standard options of report builder, and get nice reports. Okay, there is magical part about testing. This is for Zane. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I would like to proceed with other IT process areas. And yeah, testing is one of my favorite ones. Easy BI has integration with three most popular testing apps on Jira. We have integration with Zephyr Scale, Zephyr Squad, and also X-Ray. And today I will use X-Ray to demonstrate some use cases and reports we have. So testing has quite complex data model, and what we try to do during this integration, we are trying to create for each of testing entities, like test cases, test cycles, or test plans, separate dimensions. And also we are creating a bunch of metrics so you can combine them and see how they are related to each other. This, I choose this report, test plan overview, for several reasons. It's very popular. It's asked, uh, customers asking for it quite frequently. Secondly, it covers a lot of metrics uh, in, in one place. So it's giving a broad overview. And thirdly, I count it as simple report. Anyone who can interact with Easy 
uh, report builder can create it. There is no calculations whatsoever. It's purely dragging and dropping and coloring the cells. So what we can see here is what we offer for testing data. We can set test plan as a page filter, and also you may set it to the test environment. So it allows you to see data dynamically just by changing page filters. On report rows, there's executions, and for each execution, you can see the uh, test run results grouped by results. This is the, col uh, the colored block. And if you see some pattern, for example, there are a lot of failing test runs, you can again interact with the report, click on the cell, and drill into details and see which exactly tests or test executions were failing. The second block uh, represents, I'm sorry, yeah. The second block represents a count of tests, but here they are grouped by different criteria, like test type, so you can see how many are manual tests and how many are automated. And the last one, I really like, we improved it recently, is that we have these de found defects during testing, and we have grouped them by the current pr um, status. So you would know whether the defects we found previously are already resolved, or we still have to push them on and find some solutions so we can proceed with testing. Let's move to the complex things. And here, um, I'm very glad that the gap between testing and development is closing, and it means that the reporting should be also viewed together, at least at some point. So here I have created one report where I have brought together testing and development status. Um, different teams have different uh, processes and iterations. Some use fixed versions, some use sprints, some use, I don't know, time frame. In my case, I have active sprint, and here's a list of requirements in the sprint. In the second column, you can see the uh, issue status, which represents the development status. And, and the next column, with col uh, colored with percentage, is, in my case, calculated measure, to show the how, how much of this requirement is tested. For example, here is some done requirement, but it's tested only 50%. I would expect some trouble here at some point. And again, the last one is my favorite found defects during testing and their current status. Now I want to make a demonstration to show you another use case, how to bring together uh, active sprint scope for, from four different perspectives, similar as Ilza showed. So I have, now I have, yes, I will build a report online. I will create a report for active sprint and see their progress from different four perspectives. To do it, I start with software sprint dimension. Uh, for active sprint, you can make calculated members, so it would always dynamically show you the active one, regardless, uh, you don't have to change it. So, for my metrics, one way how to look on the active sprint progress is issue count. I can compare how many issues in the sprint and how many of them are resolved. This would be one way how to look on at things. Second is story points. Uh, story points. I can choose similar metrics to see the progress from story point perspective. All points in a sprint versus how many of them are resolved. So yeah, we have two of them here. Third perspective, hours. Okay, I can look on, on originally estimated hours for this sprint and compare them with hours spent so far in the sprint. And the fourth one is from testing perspective, again, the requirements. How many requirements are assigned to the sprint and how many requirements are tested? Again, I have one calculated measure here. If you want to see the formulas behind it, then Find me later. I don't want to show any formulas today. <laughs> so I will show them tomorrow. <laughs> so here we have four perspectives, but it's hard to read in a table view. So what I'm going to do, I will switch to the gauge chart and compare them. Result issues compared to all issues. I will put the green so we know that this is resolved. Do the same for story points. 
how many result story points are from all story points. Let's do it green again. Let's compare spent hours versus original estimated hours. Okay. And the last one, how many requ tested requirements and compare them to all requirements. This will be orange. So I have one, one report with spri active sprint progress from four different perspectives. While the issues resolved and story points and tested requirements kind of seem similar, I can see that our spent KPI is a bit different. Probably we are overestimated or working faster than we expected for some reason. So yes, this is one of the ways how to combine different perspectives in one place. So let's proceed with the other, other use cases. Other favorite area for me is confluence. So confluence is very important part of Atlassian ecosystem. It's not so tightly integrated with Jira apps, but it's a place where people come together, collaborate, exchange information, share information, communicate. So it's important in any way. So we have also easy way for Confluence, both on cloud and data center. Uh, on, on, uh, we, you can use EasyBI uh, for publishing reports on Confluence pages. This is our recommended way and this is secure way because we check on user access rights before showing any data. And you can also add some descriptions, how to react to the report or how to read the report and also print out if you want to, to in PDF. And uh, sadly, I know that a good portion of our customers use this EasyBI for Confluence only for this reason. But EasyBI is business intelligence too, and you should use it for analyzing data as well. So here are some insights you can get out of the tool. For example, we are importing tasks you have created in, in Confluence, and you can analyze them by assignee, by status, by due date, or by creation date. You can dynamically interact with the report and find the original task, or change the criteria and to whom is this, this task assigned. Of course, uh, page use is something you would expect from any analytical tool. So we offer those as well. And you can get a different spin on page use. For example, see heat map for the last 30 days when people are reading or, uh, or in interacting on the, on the Confluence. It's no secret we use this Confluence in EasyBI to document things. And so you can learn about EasyBI. And we also monitor our content of the, uh, of the documentation page. Martin and Lauma will talk about reporting in detail in the evening, how we do it, but I will just highlight a few of those. We are checking if our content is, is up to date. So we are getting a list of, this report has a list of pages that are not updated for the longest, for example, yeah, since 2017. And I know that people are still reading this page recently, because the second column is page views. Now it's giving some power to the page views if you use it in combination with other data. And I know that Martin has created this page and probably sh he should review it and would know the best what the content sh should look like. Another one we are taking a look every now and then, I think every month. Yeah, we are checking if some of our content is not hidden so we are analyzing search queries people are using on our Confluence page and whether those keywords they are searching for are covered and whether they are not on the second page. And so it's almost like there are no answer on it. So yeah, Confluence is also a good place. You can get a good insight if you have an idea how to use this knowledge. So to conclude, I would like to say it like this. For some people, built-in reports are, are sufficient in, and enough to do their daily tasks well, very well. But if you have questions, for example, where is the scope creep from, from where it's coming? Where is the bottleneck in the workflow? Or do our team capacities are equal, balanced, well balanced? You may use EasyBI to find answers and see data from different perspectives, angles. So each team and each, uh, each team and project has many 
disciplines and they use many tools. And we try to integrate them together in Easy BI so you can take a look side by side on those data. The shared reporting synchronizes shared understanding of the KPIs across the company so, and terminology, how to use them. We encourage you to use reports and reuse them for different projects if you have come up with good, good processes. And lastly, our goal is to make your life easier so you can just kick off with easy BI sample reports. And integration is one of the ways how we do it. So, yeah, we try to make those simple things easy, but you still have an option to do it complex way and make additional data to integrate in your data and do calculations and compare, go crazy, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions regarding those integrations or other, welcome to ask them now, or you have two days still to ask them to me and Ilza. <laughs> yes.